Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson. And yes, I do have a different shirt on than I normally do. I usually have what? A t-shirt, some kind of t-shirt on. Because I'm at home, I like to be casual. But today I'm coming straight from school. Yes, I teach at a school called the University of North Texas and I love it. If you're interested, reach out to me. But that's not what this lesson is about. This lesson is all about the best way to learn jazz language, okay? And we're going to break it down. If you're new, thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoy this, in this lesson so much that you press the like button and you consider subscribing because I put out a lot of videos and a lot of lessons that I think you'll enjoy. And I, of course, really love it when you leave comments. I love hearing from everybody. I, in fact, respond to everybody, even the haters. Yes, the haters. I love it even more when you guys try to give me some hate that I just feed off of. It's like you give me energy. I love it. All right, so this lesson is all about the best way that you can learn jazz language. It is very important that you spend time um, concentrating on honing the language, learning how to speak the language. The great Clark Terry talks about three stages that you have to go through in order to get to fluency in jazz language. And in fact, in any language. First, you got to imitate, then you got to assimilate, and then you got to what? Innovate. And I'm actually going to add one more. Before those, you got to listen. You got to put it in your ears, right? And then you can try to emulate, all right, imitate. So um, we're going to, I'm going to talk about all those and how I kind of do that and how I work on that. So if you guys are ready, I know I wasn't ready last week and I was so not ready that I didn't even put out a lesson. Shame on me. I'm sorry, but I'm here today. I'm here, here and now and I'm ready to go. If you guys are ready, then let's go. All right, so. As I said before, this lesson is all about the best way to learn jazz language, okay? And before we even talk about the actual language and, and practicing it, as I stated before, it's crucial that you're putting it into your body through the process of listening, right? And not just kind of passively listening, but actively and proactively listening with the intention of gleaning the language, learning it so that it will start to actually come out. It's not going to miraculously come out in your playing if you're not putting it in, if you're not listening. OK, so and that will solve probably, I don't know, 80 percent of many of your uh, problem in trying to sound like a jazz drummer. You're not really putting it in. OK, in the deep process, processing way that you need to do it in order for it to come out. So that's number one. Listen. OK, now to the three stages that Clark Terry talked about. Right. The first stage is Im imitate. So you think about it as. So if I play something, if you're at your kit, that's even better. But you're probably not at your kit. You're probably on the train somewhere or you're probably in bed watching my video or you're probably eating. Maybe you're eating breakfast. Maybe you're eating breakfast while you watch this lesson, whatever it is. I want you to try to sing back what I play, okay? Did you get it? Did you get it? Were you able to sing it back? Okay. If you were able to sing it back verbatim, bravo, brava, whatever it is. <laughs> um, if you were close, still, brava. Because you're getting close and you actually are making an effort to sound like me. Not that I'm the best. I am by far not the best. But I am the closest thing you got in this moment to someone that you should be trying to imitate to try to sound like. Right? In this moment. I'm not saying forever. After you, this video, go listen to a real bebop drummer like who? Kenny Clark. Max Roach. Art Blakey. Right? Listen to any of them and try to sing back what they play. And then try to sing it. You see, I'm actually vocalizing 
my bebop phrases. And do you not think that I'm going to play exactly what I sang? If you can't sing it, then what? Don't try to play it. It's not going to come out because you're not actually hearing anything. But when you're able to vocalize it, that's confirming that you're hearing it. So, right? Something like that. So that's a really great process. Listen and imitate. Try to sing it first before even trying to put it on the drums and try to imitate it while playing the drums. And imitating is not transcribing. You don't need to transcribe to imitate. In fact, in fact, I encourage you not to try to transcribe because suddenly we turn off our, our senses and we're just looking at notes and dots on the page. We're not really using our ears and listening to what we're actually playing, right? And matching it, trying to match it to what we heard. So don't even worry about trying to write anything down yet. All right? Just imitate with your ears and imitate with your sticks, with your mouth. And that's the first stage. All right. So then for the second stage, assimilate, right? You want to assimilate. By the way, I'm using... I'm going to use my vocabulary. I have an ebook of vocabulary that you can check out. Many of you have checked it out. I encourage you to use this as a resource, one of many resources that you should be using. Right? There's some great books out there, um, but this is a great uh, resource for you to really see some authentic jazz phrases that you can try to, what I'm about to do right now, assimilate. So what assimilation is, is you're going to be playing and trying to make it a part of your playing, right? That's essentially what you're doing. But it's very important that you play these phrases verbatim. That's why I'm going to use my my vocabulary um, ebook as a reference, okay? So check it out. Check it out. So I'm going to assimilate and see if I can work into my playing. Number... Uh, number 11, okay? Uh, number 11. Let's see what happens. One, two, one, two, three, four. And for those of you who know, then you know that that ain't my phrase. That's Philly Joe from Billy Boy, right? And many other solos that he plays. But that's an example of me assimilating. So I'm when I assimilate, at least when I do it, I'm really trying to play these phrases verbatim. And it is it is definitely helpful for me again. Everyone's different. I really like writing my fav favorite phrases down. And that's why I've put this ebook together because they're all of my favorite fra jazz phrases. Um, and so they're likely going to become many of your favorite phrases as well. But you do not have to just use resources that you find online, right, or books. Um, you can create your own language. And that's exactly what I used to do when I was really young, in my teens. I would create a whole page and another page and another page of vocabulary, whether it's solo, solo vocabulary or um, – kind of jazz fills or different things I would make my own vocabulary so I encourage you to do that not just write out whole solos okay I'll assimilate another one um let's go for number nine number nine <laughs> you see so it's almost like it just sounds like it's a part of my playing. I'm reading it so I don't mess it up. I'm trying to play it exactly as it's written, right? But that is not the final stage, and I think you know that. Let's go to the final stage now. So the final stage is, of course, innovation. And if you're just happy and content with playing verbatim phrases, right, of all the greats, you're going to sound not bad. And some people are cool with that. But it's not as fun because it's not really personalized. It's not you. 
It's not our language until we do something with it. So I'll give you an example. Let's just take that last phrase I played, which is number nine. And I'm going to personalize it. And what does that mean? Well, we'll see. I'm going to see how many different ways I can play it. So one, two, one, two, three, four. Right? see and so that's me really trying to innovate ideas based on language that i've already learned and that i've internalized hopefully these stages can last however they need to last for you to really feel um, like you're learning the language in the right process right and i go through these stages every time there's something new um, that I want to learn, I go through these same stages, okay? It's not like, okay, I'm an innovator now. Now I don't have to worry about, you know, trying to learn new voc vocabulary in the same way. No, I'm always lurk, lurk, looking for um, and trying to find, and some of my students, they'll show me stuff or I'll see them do something. I'm like, ooh, that was slick. Let me try that. And I come home and shed it, right? And I'm trying to learn it exactly the way they played it. Then I try to what? Uh, innovate it. So there you go. My phone's ringing. It's a gig. I can't do it. I'm, I'm doing a YouTube video right now. Okay. All right. Yeah. Get somebody else. Okay. See? I just turned down the gig. For you. For you. All right. So that's the idea. Now I'm just going to play a little bit, and I want you to really try to hear some of the language um, that I'm playing, and I'm going to be drawing from page number two in my ebook so um, you can try to pick out some things that I'm playing that are based on what's there but as I said I'm not going to be playing exactly the same I'm going to be trying to be I'm at the innovation stage I guess you could say I'm not an innovator let's not get it twisted but I am innovating in uh, how I come up in how I play some of these phrases that are based in the tradition all right so here we go All right, that is today's lesson. Remember, imitate, assimilate, and innovate. And before you can do any of that, you got to what? Make sure you listen and vocalize and study and try to glean as much as you can from the recordings before you even try to play. And also, remember, this is not a race. Take your time. Be patient. Before you know it, you'll be speaking fluently. Whatever the language is, this is the same process of learning an actual spoken language as well. So it's tried and true. And if you do it, you'll be sounding like you. All right. So until the next time, you know what to do. Practice hard, but practice smart. All right. Take care. Bye bye.